Hi, my name is Margaret George. I am a registered nurse. I graduated from nursing school in 1976. I have been a registered nurse for the past 45 years. Uh, I am, my specialty is ER ICU. 20 years ago, I decided to leave the ER and intensive care and take care of the elderly patients. The facility in the Prince George's County area is our main branch and that one began in 2002. The 2005, we started m and Place in the Germantown area. Most of the clients in the assisted living suffers from dementia and Alzheimer's, which means that there's a lot of memory issues. And with the memory issues, as a nurse, as a CMT, as a CNA, a lot of patients is involved in caring for clients in this caliber because of memory issues. They, the memory for past events is very sharp and the memory for recent events is sometimes negative. So we have to give them a lot of coaching and cueing and prompts. Uh, with assisted living, there is a difference between the assisted living and a nursing home. With the assisted living, uh, one of the main reasons why we love to take care of the elderly in the assisted living is because we offer individualized care and our patients are first, our residents are first. This is our logo, our residents are first. In everything we do, our residents come first. The individualized care began because we realized that when patients come in, each client had a different need. And because of that, it made them unique, one. And two, we were able to administer care as the need arised. With the COVID-19 that started in March of this year, actually, what we did in mid-March, we stopped, we had to discontinue visiting. So we stopped visiting and we did things. We utilized Zoom and we utilized FaceTime, Skype, Google Duo in order for family members to maintain communication with, their, with the residents. This worked out very fine, but mid-July, with the recommendations of our state and county, we began visiting on an appointment basis. So we allowed two visitors at a time to come into the facility. We also utilized uh, temperature taking on, on entry and we did a visitation screening for COVID on admissions. It's a questionnaire where we asked if they were out of the country, if they were in contact with anyone with COVID, questions to make sure that the visitors were COVID free. We also, during visiting, in, um, ensure that our clients who are being visited has a face mask on. We follow the guidelines of CDC and we keep up via webinar with our county and our state to make sure that any new information that is received, that we are aware of it and we practice it so that we can ensure that our clients and even visitors are safe. Based on that, I must say that we have been successful because none of our patients in both facilities got COVID. And that was a good thing for us. In that way, we kept the population of our residents very, very safe. Uh, in most cases, when clients come in to us, they are non-ambulatory, but with effective physical therapy, they began walking and they start walking again and they become ambulatory, which is good um, for the well-being of the client. Uh, also, nutritional, uh, the nutritional status of the client is important. So we have assigned a, a dietitian who allows, gives us different menus to use for the patient. Specific menus are sometimes ordered by the physician, like a low soil diet. Patients who are, di who are diabetics, they get an 1800 calorie diet. And all these are given according to what the need is, or according to what the order is given by the physician. Uh, George's Assisted Living believes that um, each client is unique and each, each client has specific needs. And as long as they are given the opportunity to, as long as they get these needs met, they, they become very, very independent in some cases and they are discharged. We think that the main thing with the elderly is that whatever skills that they did prior to getting dementia and Alzheimer's, 
we need to continue to stimulate the brain cells so that they can continue in the path that they will be forced. So we encourage them to do whatever they did prior to becoming demented. And we have realized that that has worked a lot because a lot of the patients would come in with a lot of memory issues. And if they're encouraged to do things that they want to do, some of them like to play cards and different card games, and we allow them to do that. And it does keep the brain stimulated a lot. So the dementia, with, in addition to medications that they receive, the dementia decreases considerably. And that's our observation on patients who have come in um, with dementia and Alzheimer's. Our, our main goal is to bring them to an optimum level of care and also to encourage them to do the things that they did pre-dementia, pre-Alzheimer's. And, and we have observed that it, it works. It really works with the elderly. We love what we do. And we would not choose to do anything else but to take care of the elderly. We really enjoy taking care of them. Again, my name is Margaret George. I'm a registered nurse at George's Assisted Living. And I'm going to take you for a brief tour throughout our facility. This is our fire code compliance permit, which was given to us by the Department of Permitting Services in Montgomery County. This is our group home license from Montgomery County, which was given to us by the county. This is our state license from the state of Maryland, Office of Healthcare Quality. This is our narcotic license, and this is a license that we have in case one of our patients come in and they may have to go on hospice. We need this narcotic license so we can administer narcotics to them for pain, etc. This is my nursing license from the District of Columbia. I also have a license from the State of Maryland Board of Nursing, which is obtained via website. This is a, we use this as a, a, a notice board, and these are some letters that we got from clients who are here or who have left, just thanking us for all the good work that we do. Um, this is our schedule for what we do during the daytime uh, from the hours of 6.15 until 5 p.m. So at uh, 6.15 in the morning, some of the clients are up, some are not. So we start with bed, baths and showering about 8.30, 7.30, 8. Then breakfast is given um, between 8.30 and 9. Then we do bathroom trips and we have activities. Uh, between 10.30 and 11, we have exercises at 11 a.m., exercise sessions. Then we have lunch between 12.30 and 1, and then the clients rest between 1.30 and 2. Between 3 to 4, most of them look at CNN and other news, other things, and they discuss and they talk about what's going on in the world. Between 5 and 6 is dinner. Now, even though we have specific times, if a client requests, uh, that they do not want dinner at that time, we hold it until they are at their convenience. We always do. Because sometimes if dinner is served at 5 to 6 and a client doesn't uh, agree that they want dinner at 7, then that's what we do. Again, our residents are first. These are our visiting policies. And as I said, this facility, we try to be safe, so we have to remove our shoes when we enter. This is our stair lift that we use uh, to transport our clients upstairs. Um, this stair lift, uh, we always ensure that uh, one staff is accompanying the patient upstairs or downstairs at all times. Uh, one of the rules uh, of our facilities, a client would never be in this chair alone. There's always a staff. We do have a safety belt that we attach to our clients before they get, after they get on the chair, before the chair moves, we have to put the safety belt on to ensure, uh, to prevent falls. This room is located on the first floor, it's room one. All our rooms uh, has televisions um, with Fios. Um, most of the clients, the clients who come in request um, 
uh, television in their rooms. Uh, in this room, we have asked Verizon to give us a large digital remote control so that if the client is unable to, the vision is not so good, or even though they wear glasses, this remote control enables them to use the remote on their own if uh, they want to change the channel or if they want to whatever they would like to do. So we utilize this large remote for them. Also in this room, we have a walk-in closet where the clients could put their personal belongings and their clothing. So in this room, we have a walk-in closet. Uh, another um, area in this room is a sitting chair because most of the clients, if they are not in bed in the evening time, they'd like to sit in a chair so that they can watch their television. This is living room number one at George's Assisted Living in Montgomery County. Living room number one is utilized for visitors who would like to speak to their family members confidentially and would like a separate area to be with their family members. So we utilize this room, this, this uh, living area for that purpose. It is equipped with a television, again with Fios and where they can watch movies and they can relax and they can just enjoy family time. This is dining area number one. Uh, uh, George's Assisted Living has two dining areas. This is dining room area number one where clients sit and have their meals and just enjoy chit-chatting with each other. Dining room number two is located near to the kitchen area. Also, living area number two is what we use as an activity room where the clients are, in most, most cases, doing games, doing puzzles, and just communicating with each other. But this is one, this is dining room number one where they gather in the evening times and have their dinner. Some of them, and some of them go to dining room number two, which is located in the kitchen area. This is one of our double rooms at George's Assisted Living. It is self-contained. It has its own walk-in closet to each bed. Uh, these closets are comprised of shelves inside and also you can walk right in and put the linens and put the clothes in here. It's self-contained because it also has attached to it a bathroom, a jacuzzi and a walk-in bathroom. So this is the bathroom area um, for the self-contained room where the client has two sinks that they can utilize. Again, as I said, we have the, there is also a jacuzzi and clients do not usually utilize it. What they use is this handicap accessible bathroom where the wheelchair comes right in and the nurse or the CMT or CNA who's assisting the client would assist the client in going straight into the bathroom utilizing the handicap accessible rails. Also in this bathroom, there's a toilet here that is also handicap accessible. So in most cases, the client goes on the toilet and then from the toilet is taken care of and then goes straight into the shower. With the toilet, the seats of the toilet is handicap accessible and they have enough support with rails at the side there to hold on so that there would be no falls. Again, the client does not come in here unaccompanied. There's a staff with the client at all times. This is another double room with two beds. Uh, this room usually um, is, also, is usually used as a room where the client may be uh, a bit hard of hearing. So in this room, we do have a fire extinguisher here, a fire device that would allow the client hard, who's hard of hearing to utilize it. Um, so it is a room again with a walk-in closet and the client can walk right in and get their linens and with the assistance, of course, of the CMT and the CNAs. Uh, this is a carbon monoxide detector. It serves a dual purpose. It is also a fire alarm. So in all the outer doors outside of each room has a carbon monoxide detector with a smoke alarm so that in case of emergency, 
we will be aware of what's going on and if there's a fire. Also, in the rooms itself, we have smoke detectors to alert us if, um, you know, there is a problem. We are in the process of putting in also a heat detector that would alert us also and uh, the fire station if there is anything like a heat above 190 degrees. But we have not have we have not had that any problems concerning that for the past 15 years. So. We'll be okay.